Hi, today we're going to talk about one point perspective using a cube. Looking at the cube, um, there are some things to notice. Um, so this is a three dimensional object and we're going to translate this onto here, which is a two dimensional surface. In that translation, there are some things to remember. In anything that is three dimensional, it has a height, it has a width, and it has a depth. So those are the three talking points in perspective. Um, in a cube, all three of those are parallel, meaning the lines, see these vertical lines, are at an equal distance to each other. So the height, those lines, these lines, these lines are all parallel. When we are talking about one point perspective, um, we are dealing with a horizon line and we are dealing with a central vanishing point. So the horizon line is basically your eye level. And your central vanishing point is basically wherever you're standing that's where your vision goes to. That's where everything converges. So in dealing with a cube, if we wanted to draw a cube in space, one set of those three sets of parallel lines, so there's three sets in a three-dimensional object. Um, so one point perspective, one of those sets will converge to a central vanishing point. So if I'm drawing this, you'll see that I'm looking at the front face. And in order for it to be one point perspective and only one set can converge back, I'm looking at these. And since I can see through these on the bottom, those are the only, only ones that will converge back. So basically the depth of my cube, those lines will converge to the central vanishing point all the others, the other two, the front, the top and bottom for the height, those will remain parallel. And and the length will remain parallel. So vertical and the length, the depth will recede. So to demonstrate that, I'm gonna draw some cubes in space. Couple more things to remember, when you are drawing, you want to make sure that your vertical lines are perpendicular to your horizon line. That's super important. So if you have a triangle, because you're gonna be dealing with, if it's perpendicular, your vertical line should be at a 90 degree angle to your horizon. Um, if you don't, it's fine. Just really pay attention to keeping your lines super vertical and keep your cubes at least in the beginning straight don't you don't want to be tilting them in space quite yet that's a little more tricky um and the others your top and bottom for your length which are also parallel keep those parallel to your horizon line so straight across um, when you're drawing you can use the edge of your paper as kind of a guidepost um, or just really pay attention. So I'm going to draw a couple squares in one point perspective. So the first thing that you do is I go off to the side a little bit. I'm just going to draw two inch squares. So I start with one line and if I want to keep them really square, I'm going to use the two inch mark on my ruler and I'm going to try and get this as vertical as possible. So it's perpendicular to this. So I'm looking here and get it as close as you can to that 90 degree angle. Go up to your two inch mark. Then here, looking at your ruler, make sure this is parallel to this. You have to eyeball it. Um, if you need to get right on top of it, do that. Go to your two inch mark. And I'm doing two inches because it's easier to see. You can do any size you want. Um, and if these, if you're getting them perpendicular and parallel, your last measurement should really come out pretty good with your two inches. Okay, 
So in one point perspective, if you look at buildings from a distance, if you're driving down a street, walking down a street, and you see the front of a building, like this or the side of it, and you see it looking like this kind of thing where the top and bottom feel parallel to your eye level. So they're straight across, they're not angled in any way. And obviously the sides of the building are usually straight verticals. That's dealing with one point perspective. We always see the full front. If it starts moving off to the side, it turns into two point perspective and that's what we'll be talking about next. Okay, so your next move is from all four corners, using your ruler, go to your central vanishing point. So these are your the depth of your cube. And as things move kind of to the side, um, if they're to the right of a central vanishing point or your viewpoint, you will see the left side. If it's on the other side, then you would see the other side. So that's the start of it. Um, there are ways to find the exact depth of your cube. We're not gonna get into that. We're gonna guess a little bit. <laughs> so I want you to draw all of your lines back as if it's see-through. Um, one thing that you can do to help you see, you can use a pen to ink in what you would actually see to help you gauge what you're doing. All right, so that is your front face. So to find the cube, um, you can maybe, you know it's not gonna be this length, obviously, because as it goes back, you can see it gets smaller and smaller. Um, so make sure as you come down, you don't want it to be back here because that would be really long. Um, you don't want to go in too close because then it's still going to feel very rectangular. So maybe somewhere in here. And from that point, so this is where it gets a little tricky. I want to ink in my top plane as well. Because these lines can get a little confusing when you're just starting out. Okay. So you're going to want to go up to your top plane. So you don't want to go here. Um, so as you're doing these lines, ink in what you would physically see and then find a, a point um, to go up from the bottom to find right to your top edge to find that side plane. And again, make sure it is straight vertical and parallel to this front edge. If it starts getting slanted, Pay attention to that. Um, so I have that back edge and now I know my back edge for the length needs to be parallel to this. So a good rule of thumb, if you're looking at your horizon line or you can look at your front edge, whatever works best and draw that line. So now you have the physical, like how you would see it as if it wasn't see-through. But for this, I want you to draw as if it's see-through. So there's only two more lines to do. Super easy. You have this here, this bottom edge that's going back. Um, so you're gonna need to get that bottom and this back corner. And they're both gonna join with this line. Again, remembering in one point perspective, there's only one set that recedes back to that vanishing point. Everything else is perpen or perpendicular to each other. So they're either vertical or they're horizontal. So for your back edge, 
easy peasy just go from that back corner I'm trying to not get my head in the way so it's a little tough okay and I didn't want to use my pen for that um, use your pencil because this is the invisible part and then this should match here to here and you have your cube in 3D. Um, another thing you could do to really see it is because it has like this optical look. If you look at this small square, it's almost like that's coming forward. Depends on how you look at it. You can use a different color pen for the front and the sides that you see and then just the black for underneath or just leave it in pencil. So one point perspective when it is below the horizon line, you're essentially looking down on it. So you'll see the top of it. If you were doing one above it, above your horizon line, and again, you're going back to that central vanishing point. Um, you see the bottom planes. So it's up above you. If you have a building, your eye level depends on where it hits on the building. So it might be something like this. Let's see if your eye level was at this point. <laughs> and it would mostly go above, because if you're just standing on the ground somewhere over here, that's how you would see it. So it would cross the horizon line. So practice a few cubes, a um, couple below and a couple above. So in the next video, we'll talk about two-point perspective.